Right, how's that? That looks better. I do apologise, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Marcel Marceau show has started. No, it's finished now, thankfully. So, right, cut and let's start again. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all very well. That was a good start. The microphone wasn't even switched on. I do apologise. My mistake, I was just busy, busy telling you I'm all on my own tonight again. Vanessa's downstairs feeding babies and uh, doing what she has to do. Now I can hear myself on the iPad talking. I'm so sorry, folks. That's very unprofessional. Uh, but yes... The whole plan, <laughs> that's quite embarrassing actually, because the whole plan and what I was just telling you was now that we want our shows to become more professional again. And tonight is the first of those. We're going to have more of a concert, an organ music concert. And then towards the end, um, we will fit in some spontaneous requests and um, have some fun as well. Because let's face it, music is all about having fun. We should never take music too seriously. If you do, you're missing out on life. M music should be there to entertain. And everything we've got on the programme tonight is an entertaining piece of music in one way or another. Now, before, before I um, came up here and started setting up for tonight, I was digging through the last few sort of messages in the chat before I came upstairs. And I spotted that uh, David and Cameratim.com um, were both very excited about the Toccata and Fugue in D minor. Now, I didn't have that on the programme for tonight, but... We can be spontaneous. It's all set up here on the Sonnenorgel over in Görlitz. So maybe at some point this evening, if you like, David and cameratim.com, we could throw in the Toccata and Fugue. I haven't played it for months, so we can have some fun and see if it's still there. So there's something for everybody in tonight's, um, in tonight's concert. And like I say, as we get towards the end of the evening, things should, uh, things should become a little more spontaneous again. I've been digging through the... Um, I've been digging through the emails and there aren't actually many requests that have come in so far. So uh, we should be doing all right, actually. Now, what I do have to do, however, sorry, this is something that um, has not actually worked for some bizarre reason, but let me just do it this way and then it should work. Um, there we go, that should work. Right, let's leave it there in the background and we should be fine. Yeah, like I say, I have to start on my own this evening. Unfortunately, Vanessa is busy doing a baby duties. So I've got all my technical stuff under control. The organ is on. It's making a noise. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? I can hear it. I hope you can hear it. Good. Wonderful. Splendid. Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, get yourself something to drink. I hope you all have a tasty beverage of your choice. A glass of wine, a glass of beer, a glass of water, a cup of tea, a coffee, a gin and tonic, a whiskey, whatever you fancy. Cheers, everybody. Right then, a composer going all the way back to 1634 to 1704. That's when this chap lived. And when you think about it, he lived to be the grand old age of 69 or 70, which is pretty good going back in those days. French chap by the name of Marc Antoine Charpentier. And everybody knows him for this particularly European piece of music.
touch of a charpentier there, the legendary trumpet tune. There are many trumpet tunes in the world, and uh, they're all in the key of D for some bizarre reason, and uh, they're all rather exciting, and they're all rather wonderful. That then was the Charpentier trumpet tune to kick things off this evening. Now, let's stay in France for now. Let's stay in France. Oh, I do apologize. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Ah, okay, a ticket has come in. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you, Alexander. And thank you, hold on, what was that? And thank you, oh, Alexander. Gosh, that's very kind. Alexander times two. Very kind indeed. Right, here we are. It's right there in position. Now, French music, the beautiful French music, the beautiful French music of Monsieur Louis Vierne. Louis Vierne was one of the organists in Notre Dame back in the 1930s, and he himself... Uh, composed lots of magnificently delicious music. We're about to hear a very sort of sensual, melodic number by Louis Vuillard, not one of his big crashy ones. Um, but he himself, he was fascinated by jazz music. Um, and he, particularly his sixth symphony, his sixth organ symphony is full of um, well, quotes from Duke Ellington, believe it or not. Um, Louis Vuillard was good friends with Duke Ellington. Nobody believes that, but yes, it sounds strange, but it's actually rather true. And um, he was fascinated by Ellington's jungle sounds, his fascinating rhythms and uh, fascinating melodic ideas. And the sixth symphony by Vierne is full of little hints in a jazzy nature. However, I'm not playing the sixth symphony because it's very, very difficult. This is from the third symphony, his uh, symphony in F sharp minor, a magnificent piece of music, quite well known, and also the shortest of his six organ symphonies. This is the fourth movement, the Adagio, and it's absolutely delicious, and it shows off the beautiful celesti sounds of this organ here in Görlitz. It's rather beautiful. Sit back, relax, and enjoy.
a very different piece of music, I think you'll agree. And for some reason, my things aren't working. My winking... Oh, it is working now. Why wasn't it? It wasn't working during that piece. That's rather embarrassing. I do apologise. Now it is, however, working. So that's rather exciting. Right. Louis Vierne and his movement number four from the third symphony, F sharp minor. A rather lovely piece of music. And you have those beautiful sort of those um, scrummy, those sort of naughty chords that come in towards the end. Rather lovely. Um, he's already getting into his jazzy fear. Our friend Louis Vierne. Here's a spontaneous one that came in about 25 minutes before the concert arrived. For the concert started this evening, our friend Steffi, Steffi Wunderlich, um, requested this. It's a piece of music by Felix Mendelssohn, and actually, it's a piece of a piece of sort of um, um, traditional music that was taken by Mendelssohn and turned into a lovely little choral melody, Abschied vom Walde. So, in other words, Tatty Bye to the Woods. Not sure exactly what that's supposed to mean. O Taylor weit o Höhen, o schöner grüner Wald, du meiner Lust und Wehen, an dächtiger Aufenthalt. So it's all about spending time in the woods. Not sure what Mendelssohn would have been doing in the woods, to be honest, but it's up to you to work that one out. Let's find out. And I think we will do this in a very quiet and gentle manner. If you're interested, it's in the key of E flat. See what you think. A very simple and effective little piece of music from Mendelssohn. And a spontaneous one. There you are, Steffi. That was Abschied von Walde from Mendelssohn. A rather nice little piece of music. <gasps> Good heavens, ladies and gentlemen. It's J.S. Bach, my arch enemy. 
my arch enemy indeed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful music of J.S. Bach is sometimes playable if your name is Fraser Garchow, but not always. And uh, <laughs> there are a number of pieces by Bach that I sort of like playing. Um, most of them scare me for the simple reason that there's nowhere to hide in Bach's music. If you're playing big French romantic music, you can hide. But with Bach's music, there is nowhere to hide at all. However, there are some rather beautiful pieces of music he wrote that are, for someone like me, playable. And when I say someone like me, I mean someone who likes music that has a melody, an accompaniment, and a bass line. So in other words, homophonic music, that's what it's called, as opposed to counterpoint. Counterpoint is when you have individual lines of music all doing their own thing and talking at each other rather than with each other. Um, that's the way I see it, at least. And this is a rather delicious little piece of music. Um, I have played this on occasion in the past, but it's rather beautiful nonetheless. Um, the piece of music was written in Erfurt in 1524, and Bach harmonized it a lot later during his time in Erfurt, believe it or not. So there we have it. It's Erbarm dich mein, o Herr Gott. That's BWV 721, Bach's Werksverzeichnis 721. Um, if you want to have a little bit of German there. Rather lovely piece of music, and it sounds, hopefully, something like this. Now, what I've done here, I've set up the organ with its romantic sounds. So, we have this. Which is a lovely sort of undulating effect. Then here we have the same thing. Again, a lovely undulating effect. And then here, actually I can do it here, we have an undulating effect as well. So all three of those undulating effects make some big sounds, make some big, lovely sounds. And we can really get, we might actually be able to get away with the 30, no, I don't think, we'll leave the 32 off until the end. What do you think about that? Uh, we might be able to get away with it. Now, this is, this magnificent organ, the Sonnenorgel over in Görlitz, is, of course, designed to be played for Baroque music um, and this kind of thing, but it can sound very romantic as well. So, I'm going to pretend I'm Virgil Fox and um, have a bit of romantic sounding Baroque music. Does that make sense? I hope so. J.S. Bach, Erbarm dich mein, o oh Herr Gott.
Sounds simple, doesn't it? It's definitely not. Definitely not. Whoo, exciting stuff though. Wonderful piece of music, lovely fun. It's good fun to play that, believe it or not. Um, and it is, of course, counterpoint. There are lots of little lines running around in there as well. You've got to keep an eye on them, but it does work. It does work. Ah, exciting stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting there. And getting through the music. I have more back later, but we have a, we have, we're going to have a little sort of a little trip to sunny Englandshire, and a composer that very rarely gets played ever, actually, to be honest, uh, which I think is a terrible shame, a real shame actually, because he's a wonderful composer. He wrote a lot of children's music. He wrote a lot of very simple music. Now I say simple; it's not necessarily simple music to play, but it sounds very simple. That's the most important thing about it um, and nonetheless it's all very good fun well then I have to very quickly do something here otherwise my darling wife will be very annoyed if I don't um, hang hold on can I do this go away there are all sorts of funny things happening here there it is ha I think I did that correctly myself there we are Vanessa shouted at me from below she said keep the cool message put the cool message on so it's not Vanessa in the chat, sorry, it's me. It's me doing the chat. This is what, someone was asking, what's the screen on my right? It's my laptop. <laughs> it's my laptop, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful machine. It's, um, oh, hold on, Aha, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. It's a wonderful machine if you know how to work it. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Here we are. So I'm going to keep an eye on that while we're doing this. Now, this is a delicious little piece of music, and it's designed for the softest stops on the organ, but it's a very fun piece of music. Even by its title, it's called... It's called the humoresque. A humoresque basically means a funny little piece of music. And this is a rather funny little piece of music. And it says, with humor, fast. That's the description for it. And it's actually just, it's designed as a little piano piece for kids to play or for children to listen to. But it sounds rather lovely on an organ. So we need a little tinkly sound. So let's see if we find a tinkly little sound. How about this? That's not too bad. That's also not too bad. But I think what we need to do is do this. Yes, I like that. Now, what we're also going to do is, at the same time, we're going to do something similar up here. We're going to have uh, this, and this, and this. Actually, we might leave out that one and just have... Ah, I quite like that, but it could be nicer. So I think what we need to do is have it up here. Let's do it here. That sounds delicious, doesn't it? So I'm going to couple that down to here. That sounds good. And we've got that there, but let's couple this to that. Ha! So now we have some different sounds to do different things. And I think we'll have... I don't know, what shall we have? Let's have that down here. Don't need pedals, but it's quite handy to have them. Here then, Opus 31, number one, from Alec Rowley. Alec Rowley is a very... He's one of those sort of terribly... He looks like a character from Dad's Army. The hair brill cream black brill brill creamed back. God, that's difficult to say. Brill creamed back. The little sort of horn rimmed round glasses and sort of teeth. Sort of Harold Lloyd English style. Uh, that's Alec Rowley, wonderful guy. But he wrote beautiful music, and I think you might rather like it. Here we go.
Isn't that a cute little piece of music? It's so simple, it's so delightful. I love it. I used to like playing that at organ concerts, just as a sort of little breath of fresh air for the audience as well. It's nice when the audience can just occasionally go, ah, that's nice. I see my chat is all blocked up again, so that's rather weird. I'm not sure what's going on there. Good. Don't see Uncle Joe in the chat. Yes, Uncle Joe is there in the chat. Uncle Joe was there right at the beginning. There's Uncle Joe there. I'm saying applause. Now, we're going to stick with Alec Rowley there because he didn't just write sort of children's music with um, that kind of thing. He wrote beautiful sort of very, very sort of rich, melodic, delicious sounding music. And uh, I think we can get away with it tonight. This is the kind of stuff that gets copyright claimed, but it's wonderful stuff. Um, this piece of music was not ever actually published in Great Britain. It was published in America. America. Where Alec Rowley obviously was quite a, quite a, a well-known um, organist and composer. And this is a rather beautiful piece of music. Now, remember at the beginning we sort of had the Vierne. And the Vierne with that sort of... With its sort of, sort of, mm, what's the word we're looking for? Moody sounding harmonies. Well, Alec Rowley, if you imagine Alec Rowley sort of taking the moody harmonies of Vienne and turning them into warm and luscious harmonies. It's difficult nowadays when you think of a very English composer with warm and luscious harmonies, but yes, uh, they definitely love this. Lots of things like this. Yeah? Now, what I want you to do, I want you to sit back and listen during this one. I want you to sort of sit back and pretend you're listening to film music, yeah? A lot of modern film music is based around these harmonic movements here. It's a kind of circle of fifths, but not, okay? It's clever. See if what you think. The pavan. What's a pavan? Not a pavian, a pavan. What is a pavan? This is Alec Rowley's pavan. Who knows what a pavan is? Tell us in the chat.
It's not a delicious piece of music. See what I mean about the film music sounds? It sounds like sort of a piece of film music that's sort of, I don't know, the Shawshank Redemption. You know what I mean? Something like that. There's something about the harmonies there that just make it sound rather delicious. Now, it's also published as a duet for piano and organ, which to me sounds like something, something the boys over the Scott Brothers should be doing, piano and organ duet together. So, Tom or Jonathan, should you be watching or should someone tell them, go and check out the Pavan by Alec Rowley. It's a wonderful piece of music, highly recommendable. Um, it's very nice and sumptuous. And if you have an organ with lots of juicy eight-foot sounds, I think that would be rather delicious. Don't you? Right, now what on earth has happened here? My, my thing has decided to stop working. Oh, we have a ticket. Thank you very much to Niall. Thank you, Niall. That's very kind of you indeed. Nancy, thank you very much as well to Nancy. Happy First Father's Day, Fraser. Blessings to the Gauchor family. Oh, is it Father's Day today? Father's Day in Germany was ages ago, so obviously around the world it must be as well. Oh, well, in that case, Happy Father's Day to my father as well, who will hopefully be tuning in with my mum as well. So I suspect mum will be there with headphones and dad will be watching, I don't know, footy on the telly or something along those lines. Thank you very much indeed to Dominic. That's very kind of you indeed. And we have Alexander. We got Alexander already. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's very kind. Thank you indeed. Lovely ear massage, says Cam. Yes, it is. That kind of music is definitely there for ear massaging. Right. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is more Bach. And earlier this evening, I said just for fun, because David, David, are you still here? Oh, I see Lord Lucan is here. It doesn't look like Lord Lucan. It looks more like Jeff to me. Uh, <laughs> is it? Is it Jeff? I'm sorry. I, I, I do apologize if I got that wrong. Lord Lucan, of course, disappeared many years ago, along with Shergar, the horse. I wonder, was there a connection? I doubt it. David, are you still here? David T from, is it Romania? I think, yes, David's from Romania. And also cameratim.com. Are you still here? If you are, say yes in, say yes in the chat. And I will dedicate this one to both of you. If you're still here, if you're not. Yes, he's still here. Yes, you're both still there. Congratulations. Thank you for sticking it out. Um, a long time ago, a long time ago in a galaxy very far away, my friend Alexander, Alexander Wunderlich, you see Alexander in the chat here. Alexander, um, it was coming up to my 50th birthday. And Alexander wanted to buy a birthday present. And he did, and he bought an amazing birthday present. He bought me this. He bought me the Sonnenorgel sample set from Sonus Paradisi. It's a very, very magnificent organ. It really is indeed. And um, it can do everything, absolutely everything. So what we're going to do, we're going to have some fun, and I'm going to play Toccata and Fugue in D minor, which I haven't played since it was Alexander's birthday. And Alexander, uh, Alexander's daughter, Steffi, requested this very piece for her dad, um, which I then played spontaneously. So that's going back a bit as well. Now, let me just double check. That's the first bit. That's the fugue. Yep. And then, uh, what's that? And that's probably... Yep, that's that. And what's that? I don't know. That's after the fugue bit. That's... Oh, that's pretty much the end. That's a big bit, and that's the very end. Oh my god, there's even more right at the very end. Good heavens, right. Okay. Let's hope I get my registrations right. The Toccata and Fugue in D minor by J.S. Bach, a wonderful piece of music that gets played far too often, but it's good fun nonetheless.
proof, ladies and gentlemen, that you can never practice enough. Yes, if you're going to play that kind of piece of music and haven't played it for a few weeks or months, or in my case, almost a year probably, um, it's a, probably a good idea to have a little practice of it. It's an amazing piece of music, it really is. It's probably not even by Bach, but it's, it's, it's great fun, isn't it? It's absolutely great fun. My favourite part, and I think you will probably agree, um, my favourite part is where the pedals go crazy here. <laughs> my favorite part and all organists play it like this um And they, they slow it right down at that point and, and lose the momentum. I think that needs momentum. That's a train crashing into a wall, I think. Don't you think? Listen to that again. I think it's that. And then there's that big pause and then... All those crazy scales. And if you've got a nice crisp organ like this, that speaks really crisply, it can do that. Isn't that great fun? Ah, good fun. Anyway, there you are. That was for David and cameratim.com. Ignore the mistakes in the middle, because I'm only human. I'm only human indeed. Whew. Anyway, yes. Uh, it possibly a violin piece as original. Yeah, Jeff, that's correct. Um, it's, uh, nobody really knows who wrote it, obviously, because we don't have a time machine. If we did, we'd all be lottery millionaires. Mm. Or billionaires by now, I suppose. Um, so it's impossible to tell, really. Um, it's attributed to J.F. Bach, and it, it's likely that it started out life, at least the toccata part, started out as a kind of Vivaldi-esque um, sort of um, violin toccata. That's the idea. Chili fan, my favourite part is the building before the main theme is played only in the pedals. Oh, you're right, that is a good bit, isn't it? That is a good bit. Anyway, wonderful piece of music. What we might do one day, I might sort of take it apart, analyse it, and dig through it that way. Now, when we're talking wonderful bombastic music, then we have to play my favourite piece of organ music by César Franck. I've played it many times and I love playing it, but I've never played it on this organ. So I have no idea what it's going to sound like. I set up some registrations um, just before sitting down to dinner this evening. So let's see what it sounds like. It is, of course, my favourite Franck piece. It's the Pièce Héroïque by César Franck which I really rather love, and it should sound pretty good on this. Oh yeah. It's going to sound good. It's going to sound good. I didn't play through it, I just registered. That's all I did. Just pulled out the stops, put them in the right order, hopefully. And we will see what we can come up with. Right then, the Pièce Héroïque by César Franck. And is my winking and blinking going to work? It looks like it is now. That's fine. Here we go.
complete with audio clipping at the end. I, it's a wonderful piece. It does work on this organ too, it really does. I like the middle bit, I rather like that. That made some rather nice noises there, didn't it? And also the timpani. <gasps> That's good, that sounds just like timpani, doesn't it? Panlomito, no, we're not on Skinner, we're on the Sonnenorgel in Görlitz. Hello, Panlomito. Uh, good fun tonight. Definitely good fun. Oh, hold on, did this, I, oh, I sent a piece of music across. Let's see if it came through. Let's see if it came through. Hold on a minute. Oh, there it is. It's there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the classical part of this evening's concert. I expected that to take about an hour. Well, obviously, all my chit-chatting in between and the little faux pas with the audio at the beginning took some little time away. So there we have it. Now, isn't that, isn't that exciting indeed? Oh, I'm going to take the headphones off for a minute because we're going to load up another organ. We're going to have another organ. Now, don't worry, it's not going to be the theatre organ. It's going to be my second or th third favourite organ. No, I think second favourite organ at the moment um, for Hauptwerk. It is the organ in Duren, which has its wonderful Shamad trumpets. I love it. It's absolutely wonderful indeed. Whew. Heavy going tonight in this warmth. Um, I put on a shirt to look more professional. <laughs> Did it work? Did it work, everybody? Oh my goodness me. Right, tasty beverage time. Hard work. Ah, nonetheless. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Is this a good idea to put together sort of more sort of uh, more serious concerts from time to time? Well, on Sundays, basically, if we have a sort of serious Sunday and then a fun, a fun um, thing. Oh, what's this? What's happened here? What happened here? J.C. Bauger. Hello, J.C. Bauger. Yes, we did notice that you became a Tuba member again. Thank you very much indeed for that. That's very kind of you indeed. Um, you can become members of the channel through either here through um, YouTube itself or on a thing called Patreon or now on a thing called Buy Me A Coffee. And Buy Me A Coffee is actually becoming a very professional platform indeed. It's becoming even better than... <laughs> no cravat, John, no. It's becoming even better than Patreon in my mind. Um, it's, it's rather wonderful indeed. Uh, and Buy Me A Coffee offers, offers a lot of extras. A lot of extras as well. So, for example, we have we have something that we have our wish list there, and at the moment we're saving up for some professional lighting. As I don't know if you notice, things are looking a bit dimmer tonight than they usually are. At least they feel that way because this light here is losing its LEDs. So I don't know how long we've got with that one. It, that used to be this one here. I've changed them around because this one's even worse. The one down on the pedals there. Uh, so the pedals are actually they're not too bad. Actually, they're not that dark, but. They're getting there. So we're saving up for some very professional lighting at the moment. Um, so if you want to help us out there, go and check out Buy Me A Coffee. Perhaps Joe or Cam or Urza, you can put the Buy Me A Coffee link up there. You can put the Buy Me A Coffee link up there. That would be very good to go and check out. And like I say, it's not just for things like the wish list. There are all sorts of things. There, there is membership along the lines of Patreon. There are also commissions, which is a rather interesting idea if you have a loved one who's coming up, let's say you have a birthday or a big celebration or something coming up and you want to treat them to a little sort of private extra video. Maybe they don't, they're not part of the Gartro gang and they want an extra little video or you want to treat them to an extra little video, then commissions are available. If you're a member and buy me a coffee, you get uh, reduced rates commissions as well. Very clever. All these business ideas in the background. Um, and there are all sorts of things in there. You can, you know, you can just get in touch um, you can you can book time with me if you want to spend time with me virtually obviously talking about music and things. It's all possible go and check out buy me a coffee. It's all there wonderful stuff Well ladies and gentlemen here is the organ in Duren and we're gonna have fun tonight with a little piece of music a little piece of music that our friend Jez requested now it's on a million different pages so as long as my um, as long as my winking and blinking is working it should work rather nicely Back in the day, back in the day, a, a crazy band called The Loving Spoonful, which, which, um, well, which everyone thinks means a loving spoonful, a spoonful of love, a spoonful of medicine, a spoonful of sugar, whatever you want to think about. But according to George Harrison, what they actually meant was a spoonful of something else. But anyway, we won't talk about that because that's naughty. But they came up with some wonderful, wonderful stuff and... 
our friend Jez spotted that in their magnificent piece, what a day for a daydream, that one, this piece, which is rather cute, um, they talk about the bundle of joy. And of course, we don't give you the name of our baby girl, we just call her our bundle of joy. So let's play what a day for a daydream and dedicate it to our little bundle of joy. Day for a daydream. Bop. Yeah. What a wonderful, fun piece of music. Isn't that good? I like this happy little piece. JC, yes, I am working on your request as well. Um, it's difficult at the moment to get time to actually sit down and practice because of bundles of joy and things like that. Oh, a ticket. Thank you very much to Dylan. Hello, Dylan. Dylan. I don't. Do we know Dylan? Is Dylan new? That's very kind. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you for joining us and thank you for considering helping us with a ticket. That's very kind of you indeed. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Isn't that fun? What a day, what a day, day. Now, we talked about tonight was tonight's title was From Bach to Gershwin or those or along those lines. So we have to play something by Mr. Gershwin. And I love music by George Gershwin, and I particularly like his rhythmic numbers. Therefore...
fascinating rhythm. Oh, given the bizarre treatment there. Oh my goodness me. Jez, thank you very much indeed. Very kind. Jez, Jez, Jez. Jez from a wonderful part of the world. Mm, good heavens. Fascinating rhythm indeed. What a wonderful piece of music. You can do so much with it and it doesn't do very much. Simple simplicity is often the best. Right, now talking about simplicity is often the best. I need to reach across to my desk here <laughs> without showing you my, hmm, my naughty moist <laughs> spots. Um, I, was, I was working in the office this afternoon up here getting ready for various bits and pieces, online tuition and things like that. I was, <laughs> I was out and about and then I made it back late um, and uh, got in for the second student. Mm. And um, my goodness me, it was very warm up here. I measured 38.5 degrees up here, which is pretty, pretty, pretty hot up here. Ah, Jerry, hello, Jerry. How are you doing? Gosh, I'm out of breath after that little number. Now then, we have to have a little piece of music from our Brown Book of Magnificence. And the other day on Friday, we had number 16. So today we're gonna to have number 17, unless of course, let me just double check. Uh, and this, there's okay, occasionally, oh, we had a birthday. It was Mike's birthday yesterday, right? Well, in that case, Mike, we need to, we need to, yes, we need to do something for Mike as well. Oh, we have a new member, a new member on Buy Me A Coffee. Jim, thank you very much for joining. That is so kind, wonderful. We now have three members on Buy Me A Coffee. Wow, Jim, thank you. That's lovely, thank you very much. Oh, I like having the laptop here. I can read emails as well. Right. Anyway, back to the program I need it for. There it is. Um, what was I talking about? The Brown Book of Magnificence. Oh, yes, I was double-checking there wasn't anything extra in the mails. That's right. And um, from, from concert to concert, we're working our way through this magnificent book. And tonight, we are on number 17. Good heavens. And it's a rather interesting title. So I'll spare you the title, but it's a rather lovely piece of music. It's a very simple, it's only got one, two, three, four, five, six, it's only got eight bars of music. Is that it? It is. Eight bars of music, number 17, so we can have fun with that. Whew. I still say exhaust fan in the window pointing out. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to work, because if that window's open all night, all the beasts of the, of the field and the creatures of the air and whatever else will come flying in there and eat me alive, basically. The room is already, I've already removed moths the other day. There's a little beast there. Um, something's flying around in that corner there where the blue light is, but he's not going to fly for very long because there's a spider over there, so he's going to get him. There's a rather weird looking orange thing flying there. What on earth is that? Gosh, what a disgusting looking thing. Looks like a flying bogey. I'm not terribly sure what that is. Anyway, lots of little flying creatures. So no, if that window was open all the time, hell would break loose. And if there's a fan pointing out, then they're still going to get in. So no, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, Number 17 from the Brown Book of Goodies.
what a beautiful, simple piece of music. It reminds me of something. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Right, this is how my little brain works. Let me see, there's something about this. So, it's that. Something. Charles! Thank you very much. Charles just got us a little ticket there. Thank you very much indeed, Charles. <gasps> I know what it is. Um, ah. Um, what's the Silence of the Lambs, part two. What's that called? Hannibal. It's just called Hannibal, isn't it? With Julianne Moore as Clarice Starling. I, um, Anthony Hopkins, of course, as Hannibal Lecter. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's where it comes from. There's something, go and watch the film again, Hannibal, with Gary Oldman as the guy in the wheelchair. Um, Mason Verger. There you are. Gosh, my memory's coming back. But yes, that's, um, that's the kind of melody. And, the and this bit. That kind of thing. There's a sort, there's a sort of plain, plaintive, isn't that a wonderful word? Plaintive sound to that. And um, music was very well written to that film. I remember films by the music scores, funnily enough. And uh, that one, it wasn't a bad film. It wasn't as good as the original, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where it comes from. Yeah, that's it. Go and watch it. Go and watch it. Wonderful film. Wonderful film. If nothing else, then Dr. Lecter escapes at the end again. Minus a hand. Right. I, um, I do talk a load of rubbish sometimes, don't I? I really do. Uh, who does? Oh, that's Charles again. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you. Very kind indeed. Very kind indeed. Right. That was number... Um, Number 17 from our delicious book of goodies there. And um, we have to do something. Empty chairs at empty tables. Empty chairs at empty tables. It does sound a bit like that. You're right. Doesn't it? Gosh, why not do a Laurel and Hardy silent film? That's a good idea, David. I like that idea. We're going to do a, um, a silent film again soon. Um, we're not going to do a festival again soon, but we will, do, uh, we will do a sort of mini sort of concert series again, and we will do silent film accompaniment. And Laurel and Hardy, is, is Laurel and Hardy already in the public domain? I'm not sure. Buster Keaton is, which makes it a lot easier. Um, I'm not sure Laurel and Hardy films are in the public domain. Check that out, someone. If they are, then let me know. Um, Harold Lloyd, some of his original films are apparently about to be in the public domain. Mm. There we are. Interesting indeed. Now, Duke Ellington. We mentioned Duke Ellington already earlier this evening. And Duke Ellington came up with some wonderful melodies, but at the same time, some very, very simple riffs. And this is probably the most simple of them all. It's just three notes. Actually, that's not true. It's actually only two notes, but three notes in a riff. Two repeated and one other one. So, yeah, it's amazing. And it's either called the Sea Jam Blues or Duke's Place. However, if you want to add words to it, down at Duke's Place. Mirabilos died in 1955. Yes, it's got nothing to do with who died when. It's, 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 uh, with film, it's to do with when it was, when or if it was registered properly. And a lot of those old films were registered and the copyright was only on them for a few years. They forgot to renew the copyright. That was the Buster Keaton thing. They forgot to renew copyright on his films. So they became public domain um, just, <laughs> just by a matter of course. Even during Buster Keaton's life, they were in public domain, which meant he wasn't earning a lot of money from his films. Poor guy. Anyway, Duke's Place or the Sea Jam Blues. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. I want a two. I want two.
C jam, blues, or jukes place, or just a boogie woogie style thing in C major. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Dr. Charles, thanks for donating to our viewers. Yes, I mentioned that, Dr. Charles. I said thank you, Charles, to your ticket. I think I mentioned it twice. So thank you very much indeed. But yes, you tell us in chat as well. That's good, thank you. Ah, uh, wonderful piece of music, isn't it? Now then, we have to have a little sort of more gentle, whew, soothing number, because it's getting to that time of night where we need to sort of wind down very slowly. And I've just heard my, uh, my first mosquito bite on the back of the neck during that piece of music as well. Hmm, not good. Oh, I see the light isn't on. See, Vanessa's not there tonight. She would have told me the light in the background is not on, which is not good. Naughty boys. Wonderful piece of music, one of my favourites, um, about the wonderful city of New Orleans. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? I love it. It's a wonderful piece of music, wonderful harmonies, absolutely beautiful. See what you think. ticket from Uncle Jerry. Thank you very much indeed. Gerald also mentioned in the chat there. Did I not mention Gerald on the way past? I thought I did. Did I not? Um, sometimes they don't come in. We had this problem on Friday night. We had a couple of emails from folks who were saying, oh, I sent you, I bought you a ticket and you didn't mention my name and uh, we didn't get them. Oh no, we may not have had Gerald actually. Hold on. Hold on. You might be right, Gerald. Maybe I didn't mention it because it's not here. No, it doesn't look like it. 
Who that? That was Charles. We mentioned Charles. That's Jez. That's Dylan. That's Nancy. Who this? That was Niall. And that was Stefan. And no, we don't actually... Gerald, it's not in yet. So that's... Okay, well, let me just double-check the emails. Because sometimes, sometimes we get them in the emails instead. Whew, we shall see. We shall see. No, nothing in the emails yet as well. well. Maybe it's taking its time to come through. Sometimes that happens. So I do apologize. On Friday night, we didn't get that to, we didn't get that to work at all. Um, on Friday night, a lot of people were buying us virtual tickets. And thank you very much for that indeed. Ooh. And they didn't come in until about sort of midday on Saturday. So occasionally PayPal has its moments. So if we don't mention, if we don't mention it fairly sort of quickly, then do please bring it up because uh, it would be good to find out and make sure that it is coming through. We don't, want, we don't want anything to be disappearing and disappearing off to naughty hands in other places. So yes, well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, nonetheless. Hennessy Frenzy. Oh, good heavens, yes. Good fun indeed. Well, folks, we're getting towards the end of this evening's celebrations. And whew, it's been a hot and sticky one up here in the organ room. I'm hoping that very soon we'll be able to get some air conditioning up here. It promises to be even hotter in the coming week. Tomorrow and Tuesday were due, were due however, a little bit of um, relief in the form of some uh, thunderstorms. So let's hope they bring the temperature down a little bit, or at least, at least get rid of some of the... Um, at least get rid of some of the humidity knocking about. We're going to finish off this evening's concert with one of another one of my favourite jazzy pieces. And it starts in my favourite key. It starts in the chord, at least, of D-flat major. The piece of music itself is actually in A-flat. A-flat. And it's an absolutely wonderful number. It goes like the bloody clappers. It's wonderful stuff. From the east end of London, it's the Limehouse Blues. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening for um, our Sunday night is Organ Music Night. That was our classical music selection. I hope you enjoyed it. Do please get in touch and let me know what you think or thought. <laughs> what you thinked or what you thought let me know what you thought and um, we will continue doing this thing now we've got lots of exciting extras coming through the week so look out for that I'm busy working on some on some exciting stuff in the background and all shall become apparent very very soon thank you very much folks see you through the week
the Limehouse Blues. Two things before we go, ladies and gentlemen. Happy birthday to Mike. Happy birthday to Mike. Happy birthday, dear Mike. Happy birthday to Mike. Got it, just at the last second. Whew. Nice one. And, ladies and gentlemen, cam, link in the uh, description, please. Um, now that midnight has arrived here and you have finished listening to my Sunday night as organ music night, I want you to all, at least those of you who don't have to get up early tomorrow morning in Europe, I want you all to go and check out a young guy in Los Angeles called Aaron Shows. And Aaron, Aaron is a wonderful young organist who has been performing um, amazing live concerts um, for the past little while from a church somewhere deep in Los Angeles and Aaron's concerts are rather amazing and he puts in a lot of work and effort to them and there's only about sort of, 20 people in the live chat watching him which I think is a terrible shame I think it's really great fun so here please put put a link here please Cam or someone put a link to Aaron Shows A-A-R-O-N and then Shows S-H-O-W-S go and check out Aaron Shows and his live streams there should be one coming up round about now um, over in the Los Angeles area um, and it would be rather good fun indeed who dis JCB thank you JCB a final ticket coming in right at the end Jez I saw some of his stuff very good yeah it is it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful anyone anyone a link to Aaron there it is thanks Cam Cam's got the link in there so that's it go and check out Aaron and say hi from me um, I'm not sure I will be there for tonight's concert it's too late for me to be honest at this time <laughs> at this time of night but it's wonderful stuff great fun indeed he plays in cool socks as well and the baseball cap go and check him out wonderful stuff thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for joining us for our sunday night is organ music night i will say hello and goodbye on behalf of vanessa who couldn't be here tonight for us but thank you very much for everyone else who helped out in the chat tonight to cam to Urza, to Joe. You're all wonderful. Thank you so much indeed for keeping an eye on things. Aaron, there he is. Aaron is actually here. He's there watching. Hi, Aaron. I'm trying to send a few people over to your show tonight. So I do hope, I do hope you get a few of the Gartro gang coming to watch your music later on. It's time for me to say goodbye. It's, what is it? It's three minutes past midnight in this part of the world. So bye-bye blues time. See you through the week. Mm -hmm.